just what is the merchandise of Babylon? This is part 144 of the Revelation study. We've been working through the book of Revelation. We're currently in Revelation 17, 18. We're looking at Babylon, which literally means confusion. It's the end time false Christian church. This church is rich. It lives luxuriously. It lives just like the world because they worship other gods and idols. And we saw in the last video, the merchants and the ships are those leaders that bring Christianity by land and by sea. Churches and power churches bring, bring in Christianity to 2.4 billion people in this world. Now we're going to look at merchandise and to look at the 28 products of Babylon, we have to look at it this symbolically. We compare scripture with scripture. Jesus' words are spirit and they are life. Jesus is the word of God. And we're commanded to compare scripture with scripture. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little bit, there a little bit. Please consider subscribing to this channel. There's a little red button in the bottom right hand corner. And let's move on in the study. In the description section of this video, I've placed some links to things that we've studied already on Babylon and the Babylonian captivity, Great Tribulation, uh, and also some links to our website for more detailed study of, of verses on this topic about Babylon. So please consider looking at the description section and using those links for further study. Before we look at the merchandise of Babylon, let's review 2 Peter chapter 2, where we see the merchandising of Christian, the merchandising of Christianity, a very clear passage. There were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately bring in damnable heresies, those heresies of the free will gospel, of keeping sacraments, the, the heresy that a Christian doesn't have to be holy, can be, can be worldly, a carnal Christian, false prophecy, all type of heresies. And through covetousness, the di desire to be rich and luxurious, shall they with feigned words or plastic words make merchandise of you, deceptive words. They have forsaken the right way, the way of humility, the way, the way of living a Christian life in service to God, and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. And that's what happens in Babylon. The merchants and shipmasters are merchandising the church. And we know that Babylon deceives all nations, and she does it with her fornication and her sorcery. And we see in this passage in 2 Peter 2, those who infiltrate the true church for gain. And they do that by the worship of other gods. They allow for sin. They allow for worldliness in the church. And it makes the church huge, 2.4 billion people, but many are called and few are chosen. So here's the key verses we're looking at. Revelation 18, verse 12 and 13. We'll look at each of these 28 items in this list of the merchandise of Babylon in upcoming slides. And we're going to do this as a survey. There's, each one can, can be a lesson on its own, but we're going to do a survey on our website, therockofoffense.com, the study notes for this, uh, this, these videos. There's much more detail if you'd like to go into that. So we see the 28 products of Babylon's merchandise in Revelation 18. And they can be grouped into seven categories. First, we see metals and stones like gold, silver, precious stones, pearls. We see fabrics, fine linen, purple, silk, and scarlet. Building materials, things that you build something with. Wood, ivory, precious wood, brass, iron, marble. We see incense and fragrance, cinnamon, odors, ointments, frankincense. Food and drink, wine, oil, fine flour, and wheat. Animals, beasts, sheep, horses, and chariots, and people, bodies and souls of people. So we're going to go through these slides, and we're going to understand this, and we're going to move quickly. But each one of these items are symbolic of things having to do with Christianity. So we're going to look at that in the slides to come. First, we're going to look at gold and silver. In this context of Revelation 18, we see that true Christians are referred to as gold, silver, and also precious stones, which we'll look at the next slide. And we see in 2 Timothy 2, the Lord knows them that are his. Let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, which refers to, the, to, to God's house, the church, there were not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth, 
some to honor and some to dishonor. Many are called, few are chosen. The ones to honor, of course, are gold and silver. They're symbolic for building the house of God with God's people, God's true people. So we see Babylon actually has true Christians in Babylon, as we've seen in other videos. We also see the same concept in 1 Corinthians 3. For no other foundation can a man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. This is talking about the building of the church. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble. And the passage goes on to, to show that wood, hay, and stubble will be burned away. But gold, silver, and precious stones are the true building, which is only the true children of God. Those that are chosen. Not just those that are called, but those are, that are chosen. And we see Lamentations 4.2, the precious sons of Zion are comparable to fine gold. So gold and silver represent the good building of the church with true Christians, and that's part of the merchandise because true Christians are merchandised by Babylon. Precious stones, the passage we just looked at. If any man build upon the foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, precious stones are a good thing. They represent, again, true Christians. We were called in 1 Peter 2, 5, ye also as living or lively stones are built up a spiritual house, or the house of God, or the temple of God, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Christians are as precious stones. We also see in Ephesians 2 that Again, we're built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building fitly framed grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye are also built together for habitation of God through the Spirit. Babylon includes not only uh, unsaved people, but there are Christians there. And those Christians there, because they're holy and they're good and they understand the Bible, they can be used. And they can be merchandised. They can be fooled. They can be attempted to be decept deceived by the things that go on in the church. Okay, next we see on the list pearls. Pearls are something of great value and it points to the kingdom of God. Babylon merchandises the kingdom of God because it's offering, here is the way to, to know God. Here's the way to salvation. Here's to be part of the kingdom of God. But Babylon does it by fornication, by saying it's okay to worship other gods and idols at the same time, to sin, to live like the world. Revelation 21, 21, the 12 gates of the new Jerusalem, the kingdom of God, or 12 pearls. Every gate was of one pearl. It's the entranceway into salvation. That's what the pearl is representing here. Again, the parable of the merchant seeking pearls. It refers to the kingdom of God. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he has found one pearl of great price, the kingdom of God went and sold all that he had and bought it, sold out for Christ. That's the good merchant. And we, as true Christians, are sold out for Christ. We're not going to compromise, but Babylon, is, of course, is a compromising. But Babylon is offering this kingdom of God. Matthew 7, give not that which is holy unto dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. The pearls here are referring to the kingdom of God. It's, it's being, being judicious and, and offering the gospel in a way that, that it's going to be followed in truth. And there's no worshiping of other gods and idols. There's no deception. We want to share the true gospel with people. And then God's elect will hear it and come in. But we don't want to fool people like Babylon does to trick people to come into the church. They offer them social benefits, social welfare. They offer them a promise of salvation and being worldly at the same time. But pearls here represent the kingdom of God. Okay, fabrics. Fine linen and purple. Fine linen, of course, represent good works righteousness. Revelation 19, 8, to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. It's to be righteous. So Babylon offers righteousness. It offers morality, but it's twisted and deceptive. We know that priests rep were clothed in fine linen, and fine linen represents holiness in Ezekiel 16. 
Similarly, the purple represents royalty. And there's several passages I list here in the Old Testament that, that show that. And we know that Christians are priests and they're royalty. So again, Babylon is offering something that's, that's important, something that's royal, something that's righteous. It appears righteous on the outside, but inside it's full of dead man's bones. It's, it's tainted because it's deceptive. People are using it for gain by teaching worldliness, just like Balaam. It's, it's the reward of unrighteousness. More fabrics, the silk and the scarlet. Silk is a covering. It's a type of salvation. Ezekiel 16, I girded thee about with fine linen and I covered thee with silk. And that's referring to the salvation of Israel in the Old Testament. Fine linen and silk are pictures of the covering so that, that the, the church is not naked. Isaiah 61, 10, my soul shall be joyful in my God. He has clothed me with the garments of salvation. Silk and fine linen, he has covered me with the robe of righteousness. And scarlet, of course, points to sacrifice, to shedding of blood. Christ was arrayed in scarlet. Moses took the blood of calves and goats and water and scarlet wool and, and hissed up and sprinkled both the book and all the people. A, a symbol for, for sacrifice. And that's what Christ was, our sacrifice. Though your sins be as scarlet, they should be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they should be as wool. Babylon is offering salvation. But it's a false salvation. It's a false assurance of entrance into the kingdom of God. It, it, it looks like it's Christian. It, and there's many Christians that are in Babylon. But, but when it comes down to it, it's going to be mixed with fornication. And it's a fornicating harlot. Because it teaches that it's okay to worship other gods and idols. Okay, now we're going to move to building. <clears throat> we see thion and precious wood. Thine wood is a fragrant wood. Precious wood is a valuable wood. And we see wood is used for building the temple. The navy also of Hiram that brought gold from Ophir brought in Ophir great plenty of almug trees and precious stones. The missionaries that went out building that spiritual temple of God, it's symbolic for the building of God's temple. And Solomon had those things brought in to build the temple with. 2 Corinthians 2 Send me also cedar trees, fir trees, algum trees. And these are, are fragrant, valuable wood. Even to prepare me timber in abundance for the house that I'm about to build shall be wonderful and great. That house that, that Solomon built and David, David designed and Solomon built, it was a symbol for the temple of God, for the kingdom of God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. It's the temple of God. The building, the fragrant wood, valuable wood, it's that promise that Babylon provides that we're building an organization. We're building the kingdom of God. We're building everybody that comes, all 2.4 billion. You're all welcome into this kingdom of God. And, and they do it by deception and good works and, and false gospels. But again, it's, it's the offer of salvation, the offer of being part of, an, of, a, of God's organization. Okay, ivory. Ivory, that's an odd one to be on the list. But we find when we, we look at the very few scriptures that talk about ivory, that it's really a valuable gift from afar. For example, King Solomon's merchandise came from across the sea. The king had a sea at the navy of Tarshish, bringing gold, silvery, ivory, apes, and peacocks. And again, the, the King Solomon is a type of of Christ is a type of the building of the, of the temple of God, the kingdom of God. And also Solomon made a great throne of ivory. It's something that's brought from afar. Ahab, although he was a wicked king, he had a house of ivory. And a house represents, again, a building of God. But he was a wicked king. Ezekiel 27, from many islands were the merchandise of thine hand. They brought thee for a present horns of ivory and ebony. Ivory was brought from afar as a present. And it's symbolic for the building of the church by gifts from afar. And in other words, missionaries going out in parachurch organizations, bringing those people into the church, ivory symbolizes that. It's precious, 
It's beautiful and it's meant to be part, but that's another part, even though there's true Christians being brought in by Babylon, but um, there's also much deception and many are called and few are chosen. Okay, we next see brass and iron. Brass and iron both represent strength in the Bible. Brass is superior to iron. Brass is the, the articles of the tabernacle. The tabernacle and the wilderness were made of brass. They were things that represented work. And they were strong and they were. And they represented the works that were done in the tabernacle. Brass represents the work of Christ. We've looked at this before. His feet like a defined brass. His feet, the feet of Christ, touched this earth. This sin-stricken earth. And he was burned but on the cross. They were like fine brasses that burned in a furnace. It represents the work of Christ on this earth. Revelation 1.15. Brass is strong and it represents work. Iron is strong. It represents rulership. To rule with the rod of iron, which is a very uh, common phrase in the Bible. So brass, it's strength and work in the church or the parachurch. And iron is strength and it's the rulership or the government in the church. So we see brass and iron represent the strength of those things that happen in Babylon. Okay, next, marble, marble. Marble's a beautiful, a beautiful substance. And there's only three other occurrences of marble in the Bible. One of them, of course, is Solomon's temple. We keep going back to Solomon's temple because it's a symbol for the building of the church of God. But Babylon builds that church with deception, with sorcery, with worshiping false gods and idols, with fornication. And we see that, that Solomon's temple had marble stones in abundance. Beautiful marble stones. King Ahaziah's palace had pillars, pillars of marble. Song of Solomon 5.15, referring to Jesus Christ, his legs are as pillars of marble. And we see that two of the three occurrences clearly talk about pillars. And we know that pillars in the Bible point to truth. It points to the word of God. Babylon brings some truth, but it's deceptive truth. It's, it's, it's things that, in the truth, it becomes perverted into a lie. It's mixed with lies, but there still is, because God's people, the light of the candles there, the voice of the bride and bridegroom are in Babylon. There is truth there, because the Bible is there still, all the way up to Judgment Day. Incense and fragrance. Cinnamon, an ingredient in the holy anointing oil. Odors literally means incense, which refers to the prayer of the saints. We've looked at that in Revelation 5.8. Ointments points to the death of Jesus Christ. Several times this word ointment that's used in Mark 14 was used of Jesus being anointed for his death. It's pointing to the anointing of uh, the death of Christ. Frankincense was a gift of the Magi given to Christ. And we see in 2 Corinthians 2, For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. To, to the one we are the savor of death unto death and the other savor of life unto life. There's a lot of oil and cinnamon and, and fragrant uh, substances that point to truth about Christians and truth about Jesus Christ. And it also points to prayer. Next we see wine and oil. And we've looked at this in a previous video, which I'll tag in this slide. The black horse, the third seal, back in Revelation 6. Christians, the oil represents the anointing with the Holy Spirit. Christians have the Holy Spirit. So Christians that dwell in Babylon, the Holy Spirit's there. There's still some good in Babylon. All Christians are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Wine points to the blood of Christ, the sacrifice, the oil and wine. We, we were called provided he healing for the Samaritan man. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the blood of Christ. It, it, so that's in Babylon, and Babylon uses it, again, in a deceptive manner. But, but it's the way that the, the, Christian, the, the Christians are used in Babylon to make this enormous organization of 2.4 billion people. We also see fine flour and wheat. Fine flour used in offerings in the Old Testament which has to do with sacrifices. Ezekiel 4, take unto thee wheat, barley, beans, lentils, millet, and fidgets, and put them in one vessel and make thee bread. They're the ingredients to bread. Fine flour and wheat are important to bread. Bread is symbolic of the word of God. 
It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Deuteronomy 8, he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger, fed thee with manna, that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Bread is a symbol for the word of God. It's a symbol of Jesus Christ as the word of God. And that is in Babylon, and Babylon uses that and merchandises that to, to bring people in for personal gain and to gain into the church. Beast and sheep. Beast point to something that serves. It's a, this beast is a different Greek word than the beast of Revelation 13 and 17. This beast has to do with a domesticated animal for service. The elders of the church are counted as beasts. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in word and doctrine. For the scripture says, Thou shalt not mu muzzle the ox that treads out the corn. That's a beast. The ox is a beast. And the laborer is worthy of his reward. It's the, it's the Greek that's used referring to people that work and that are servants in the church. And of course, sheep almost goes without saying, but that points to Christian as humble and vulnerable. You were a sheep going astray, but now return unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Again, we see over and over that true Christians are used by Babylon. The Christianity is used by Babylon. Many are called, few are chosen. The few who are chosen are what's being merchandised here. Beast and sheep refer to those humble Christians that are hardworking and serving God. Horses and chariots points to spiritual warfare. We looked at this in the fifth trumpet on locusts. The sound of chariots and many horses run into battle. It has to do with spiritual warfare. Haggai 2.22, I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms and I will destroy the strength of kingdoms of the heathen. I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them and the horses and riders shall come down, everyone by the sword of his brother. For a Christian, we're fighting the good fight. We're, 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 we're in spiritual battle. So there's, of course, there's spiritual battles going on in Babylon all the time. Bodies and souls. What's important to note in, in the last two of these merchandise the slaves and souls of men. That word slave there, it's, it's the only time it's used as, uh, as a slave. It, it's always every other occurrence. 145 of the 146 occurrences, it's body. It's the Greek word soma. So it says it's bodies and souls of men. And that's an important clue, an important clue to understand about Babylon. This Babylon doesn't know what to do with the spirit because the, those that are unsaved in Babylon are, are, are spiritually dead. 1 Thessalonians 5.23, The very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body be pervert, preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But Babylon can only deal with the bodies and the souls. They have no power because it's a false end-time church. It has no power to, to, to affect spiritually. Only God does that. Spirit is not merchandise. Jesus answered and said to them, Verily, verily, I say to thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. That alone is God's work. It can only be the bodies and souls of men that Babylon uses the, the physical bodies and the, the life of people on this earth. That's how it operates because it's all about worshiping other gods and idols. True, it's mixed with truth, and there's Christians there, but Babylon is all about fornication. Just a quick summary. Babylon, it represents churches and parachurches. Many are called, few are chosen, but they merchandise. They merchandise. They live richly. They live richly off these 28 products. And they, these products point to, to how they make a profit off of Christians and Christianity. Christianity is tr about truth and holiness and obedience. And, 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 and it makes its living, it makes it gain off of that. All these beautiful things about Christ and true Christians and the true church are perverted and, and mixed in with other gods and idols. And that's what the merchandise represents. We're going to move on. Next video, we're going to look at the sorcery. The sorcery and deception of Babylon. That's part 145. Please consider subscribing to this channel. And thank you very much for watching this video.